The Diplomat, 12th of March 2024, NATO membership by Sweden, consequences for the Indo-Pacific. Sweden's entrance to NATO will impact the countries in Sweden's so Pacific region as the alliance shifts eastward to confront a belligerent China. Sweden formally joined NATO on March 7, two years after it initially filed its application and a year after Finland did. Sweden was Finland's 32nd member of the alliance. Changes in the European security framework have ramifications for Indo-Pacific security. Sweden's entrance, delayed by Turkey and Hungary since it initially submitted its application in May 2022, shortly after Russia invaded Ukraine, has sparked these changes. Although it has frequently been noted that Sweden moved away from neutrality a few years after joining the European Union (EU), this historic milestone definitively ends Sweden's Swedish and international identity as a neutral and non-aligned state. Furthermore, the change signifies NATO's control over the Baltic Sea region and the Arctic, a strategically significant zone of Russian supremacy that China is also attempting to access as part of its massive Belt and Road Initiative BRI. In response to the Russian threat, NATO has undoubtedly been strengthened by Sweden's admission as a full member, as Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg praised, this will make NATO stronger, Sweden safer, and the whole alliance more secure. But. Sweden's entry also has significant ramifications for the Indo-Pacific as NATO shifts its focus eastward, keeping a watch on China and cooperating with Indo-Pacific nations to protect international standards. Could Sweden's increased adoption of the Indo-Pacific concept be facilitated by NATO membership, possibly through the release of a regional policy in the future? Does this incident present a worsening of bipolar disorder? If at all, how will it affect India? Reflecting on the past, an overview of the declining neutrality in Sweden. Despite being a NATO partner for peace since 1994, Sweden's relationship with the alliance has always been influenced by its assessment of the threat posed by Russia. Sweden adhered to the principle of non-alignment in peacetime to maintain neutrality in the case of war during the Cold War. However, this principle eventually seemed more like a story than a real one. Sweden's passive stance was abandoned first with its EU membership and then with the 2007 Lisbon Treaty and the 2009 ratification of the Declaration of Solidarity. However, doubts in the idea of a militarily non-aligned state remained. But after Russia annexed Crimea in 2014, tensions with that country grew, leading Sweden to strengthen ties with NATO by joining as an Enhanced Opportunities Partner. This he emphasized more transparent information exchange, cooperative training and exercises, and political conversations. Furthermore, in 2013, Russian bomber planes staged an attack on Stockholm that Sweden was unable to repel independently, exposing Sweden's Sweden's vulnerability. Further worries were raised a year later when it was reported that a Russian submarine was still present in the Stockholm archipelago in the Baltic Sea. Following this, Sweden and NATO Inc. to host nation support agreement in 2016, enabling Sweden to receive military and civilian assistance. Despite these robust security measures, Sweden's policy of military non-alignment did not support a positive agenda for bridge-building or aid in filling gaps in European security. It has only increased security paranoia, particularly in this unstable, polarizing geopolitics era. The full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022 destroyed Stockholm's sense of stability and security, as well as conventional defensive ideas. Seeing toward China, beyond the Russia threat, Although the war in Ukraine led Sweden to join NATO, Beijing will, at least in part, influence Stockholm's participation in the alliance. NATO has become a vital conduit for transatlantic collaboration with China. Beijing's increasing might was acknowledged by NATO in 2019 as both an opportunity and a challenge, but it was not yet considered a security concern alongside Russia. The long overdue revision of NATO's strategic concept in 2022 highlighted the shift in the world's geopolitical environment in the wake of the pandemic in addition to underscoring China and Russia's convergence, open criticism was directed toward China's forceful diplomatic, technological, and economic strategies that aim to limit the values and interests of its allies and erode the rules-based order. NATO's primary mission is still to defend the Euro-Atlantic. Still, it increasingly recognizes the significance of countering China's geopolitical and ideological rivalry, mainly by forging stronger security alliances with other Indo-Pacific nations with similar values. However, the boundaries of interaction are still observed, and this has not been abandoned. Even though trade and interactions were restricted, Sweden was the first Western nation to establish diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China (PRC) in 1950. 
The EU's, and NATO's, shift in stance toward China has coincided with Sweden's official formulation of a China policy in 2019. Stated differently, it has necessitated a careful balancing act between the partner-rival equation or between political divisions and commercial goals. Furthermore, several factors have impeded bilateral collaboration in recent years, including worries about China's breaches of human rights and Chinese attempts to gather intelligence about Sweden's capabilities, particularly technology and defense plans. Moreover, tensions have increased due to China's harsh wolf warrior diplomacy. Events such as the 2015 kidnapping of Swedish national Gui Minhai, the ensuing diplomatic spat, and the Russian-Chinese collusion following 2022 have forced politically naive Sweden to re-evaluate its non-alignment and neutrality posture and give greater weight to the threat posed by an authoritarian China, along with its ally, Russia. Sweden's policy towards China has become more in line with the EU, however, due to deteriorating Sino-Swedish relations, it still veers between caution and engagement. Now that Sweden is a member of NATO, Sweden's policy will undoubtedly move closer to its security partners, especially the United States. According to a poll conducted in 2023 by the European Council on Foreign Relations ECFR, the majority of Swedes hold one of the most pessimistic opinions on China, 56% said they would sanction China if it supported Russia and Ukraine. The Swedish security strategy, which is more in line with American views and more severe than the general stance of Europe, views China only as a threat and not as an adversary. Sweden's eastward mission as a NATO member will probably be influenced by its support for a more assertive posture toward China. This may involve revising political limitations that prohibit NATO from characterizing China as a security danger to European security. Fresh prospects in the Indo-Pacific region? How can NATO represent such a stance on China? Sweden has historically concentrated on serving as a mediator and establishing itself as a significant player in dispute resolution while maintaining neutrality. Given its past, it is unlikely that we will witness a foreign policy from Sweden that completely disregards promoting talks and placing peace as the top priority in favor of a reactive strategy aimed at opposing China and unwittingly inciting conflict. Instead, Sweden will strengthen NATO's current policy of forging stronger security relationships to gain more traction in the Indo-Pacific region. Above all, Sweden's decision to join NATO demonstrates its desire to be included in the global security framework rather than to be left out. In this regard, Stockholm intends to support NATO's customized initiatives with South Korea, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand as partner states in the Indo-Pacific. Additionally, given that each of these four governments has distinct Indo-Pacific goals or policies that eventually support a rules-based global democratic order, Sweden's bilateral relationships with these states will be strengthened strategically. Furthermore, Sweden's increasing goodwill toward India, another country that has declined to join military alliances but has succeeded in bolstering its security alliances, will become crucial in fending China's aggression. Sweden's admission into NATO will undoubtedly increase convergence on China as a shared threat, but it will not directly affect India's relations in this context. Through diverse local perspectives from East Asia, South Asia, Oceania, and the Pacific, the new NATO membership will also increase Sweden's awareness of the Indo-Pacific region. Similar to other European states, France, Germany, the Netherlands, and Czechia, that have developed their Indo-Pacific strategy, Sweden is immediately concerned about maritime security in the Indo-Pacific because of the impact that threats to sea lines of communication have on economic security. The world is concerned about China's China of behavior in the South China Sea, Taiwan Strait, and expanding influence in the Indian Ocean region. Even though NATO is primarily focused on Euro-Atlantic security, if a blockade becomes part of China's so-called new normal tactics, Member Sweden of NATO will need to have a clear security policy for the Indo-Pacific because of the intricate interconnections of global energy and goods trade, for example. In this regard, Sweden's unique connections to India, combined with NATO's established local partnerships with the four countries above, may eventually enable a deeper engagement in the Indo-Pacific framework. A drive for weapons deals? Sweden's competent and competitive defense industrial complex, one of the largest in Europe, is a topic of ongoing discussion regarding Sweden's entry into NATO. Major defense contractors headquartered in Sweden include BAE Systems Hagelands and Saab, among the world's top 100 arms producing and military services companies. It is evident from the record purchases of defensive equipment following Russia and Ukraine in 2022 that this would be a significant pull for NATO, both for security against Russia, 
its longtime rival and against the growing dangerous situation in the Indo-Pacific. However, more operational concerns access, including sharing sensitive information and intelligence, will give Sweden's sector additional chances, increasing defense exports from the country. For instance, the Saab Gripen, the most cost-effective fighter available, has drawn interest from people in the Indo-Pacific region. According to reports, the Philippines is considering replacing its F-16 fighting Falcons with the Swedish JAS-39 Gripen multi-role jet fighters due to the worsening situation with China in the South China Sea. In addition, Sweden's role as a NATO member providing military hardware to the area, along with NATO's increased outreach to East Asian nations like South Korea and Japan, will strengthen China's, and North Korea's, argument against NATO, which holds that American policy is to bring NATO, or at least some version of it, to the Indo-Pacific, or what is known as eastward expansion. China has always claimed that the United States, Australia, Japan, and India make up the quadrilateral security dialogue, the Asia-Pacific NATO. In addition to intensifying the regional weapons race, such a scenario would further destabilize the Indo-Pacific area. Is bipolarity deja vu? Middle powers such as Japan and India have demonstrated remarkable diplomatic skills, and their global stature has grown since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Alongside these shifts, significant opinions have supported the emergence of asymmetry multipolarity. However are, the return to bipolarity is again being examined as Sweden and Finland are joined by the United governments amidst growing strategic collaboration among authoritarian governments led by China, including North Korea, Iran, and Russia. Because of this, the chances of a true multipolarity developing are not very strong because of the ongoing disparity in power between the great and middle countries and the continuing importance and might of the US. Despite these arguments, it is evident that European and worldwide attention must now turn to the chaotic field of international administration. Therefore, further efforts toward reviving multilateral institutions are required to enable true peace and stability, in tandem with measures needed to boost national or regional defense, such as Sweden's entry into NATO.